Welcome to the Second Success Podcast by Dr. Rakesh Rana, the Clear Coach. Getting clear on the mindset for repeatable success. Welcome to the second episode of the Second Success Podcast. I'm Dr. Rakesh Rana, the Clear Coach. Thank you for all of those that uh, gave me feedback and let me know how they enjoyed episode one. It was a relief. <laughs> Please be sure to subscribe to the podcast. That way you won't miss anything that I'll be bringing to you over the coming weeks. Also, if you do like the podcast, please do leave a review on the platform that you're listening to it from. Thank you. Today, I will have a guest join me. So it won't just be me talking. Today, I have James Ison. More on James shortly. A few of you asked who was doing my voiceover at the beginning of the podcast. That was a very good friend of mine, Seema Agarwal, a university lecturer in communications and media. She's also a voiceover artist and um, she was also my vocal coach a few years back. And yes, I uh, have had a vocal coach. I found that uh, a few years back I was doing quite a few workshops, giving quite a few talks. And uh, as with anything I do in life, I'd like to do it to the best of my abilities. And I realised that um, there were a few issues with with the way I spoke. Nothing too drastic, nothing too bad, but uh, it was all about my pacing, my pitch, a few too many ums and ahs. So I tried to work on that with her and uh, I'd like to say that there was a significant improvement. Uh, not that I want you critiquing what anything I say going forward, but it was just something for my own benefit and something that I thought I could improve on. Anyway, that's that. So uh, see what I go while doing my voiceover for the podcast intro. Going back to James. I met James just over a year ago and I found him to be an extremely motivated and determined individual. Once lauded as the selfie stick king of Europe, James has gone on to achieve some great success and he's now in his new venture with the Legacy Circle, looking after ultra high net worth individuals and ensuring that their needs are looked after in terms of wealth creation, brand engagement, along with their day to day needs. In his own words, James has achieved a lot of success already, and he's still striving for more. But rather than hearing it all from me, let's listen to James and see what he has to say. Hello, James. Welcome. Hi, Rakesh. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. So we're going to be talking about second success. And what we're talking about here is the success you've taken from whatever you've done in your past to what you're applying to it in doing now in terms of the legacy circle. Before we go on to that, a little bit about what really got you to where you are now? Uh, lots of sleepless nights, uh, <laughs> vast, vast amounts of swearing, and a lot of work, a lot of lot of hard work. So, so yeah, just just for people that um, aren't aware, I, I have come from a very, I would say, a, a normal background. I mean, I'm very fortunate. I had, I had an amazing family around me with a roof above my head, and yep, I had food in my stomach and all that, but. Yeah, I had to I had to work for what I wanted. So if I wanted those extra games, I wanted that extra experience that young people wanted. I had to go and get a job. I had to work for it. Um, so in my <laughs> my situation, I, I found myself uh, selling what I could, uh, my old toys, phone cases, whatever it may be, down at the local car boot market here in the East Midlands. Getting up at half three in the morning on a Saturday and a Sunday and uh, getting to the market for. 4 30 5 o'clock to be the first get a good pitch and have a, a very long morning which sometimes led into a very long afternoon if the weather was crap and uh yeah just making money for, on, on what i could and the resources i had access to and then what what kept you going in that i mean you just talked about early mornings i was hung i was hungry like i don't, I don't like using the word hungry because it, it's kind of like it just battered around a lot Mm. Uh, when you see business motivation, be hungry. But I had, I had desire. I had want. I had the same desire a lot of people have for probably going on holiday. A lot of people aspire and desire that dream holiday to go to wherever and go to certain restaurants or go to the certain hotels, or whatever it be. My desire was to make money and get closer to what I wanted. So it, it was that hunger. It was that desire to do well and. I didn't really think of consequences other than just working hard. You started with the car boots, the markets, that led on to eBay as a platform to start selling? Yes. Um, so obviously the world was slowly but surely going online. I learned very quickly that doing car boots, I was only able to sell two days a week. And if the weather was 
crap and we're not in control of the weather unfortunately that really hampered my sales so i started trying to put things onto the internet and it worked and we were able to buy things from overseas at a cheaper price just like the standard import model and um i got lucky i got onto a couple of products which were relevant at my age um one of them being the selfie stick <laughs> and that that for me was the the product that built my business and um yeah we went from doing two days a week car boots to selling all over the world online uh, to employing some of my best friends from school to help <laughs> package um all through the summer holidays so yeah it was a brilliant it was the next evolution for me so that was as you've just mentioned it was your school friends so literally you did this th- throughout school and college and then you went to university and you know you changed track yeah i mean i, I went to university and uh, i studied economics I mean, I had this idea that being a banker and going to work in the city of London was like the be all and end all. And Mm -hmm. that was it. I'd get a Ferrari by the age of like 25 because that's what happens on Wolf of Wall Street, right? (laughs) Um, So, yeah, I was at university and while I was there, like Instagram was still relatively new. People were taking photos of their food or their holidays or whatever it may be. And um, I made loads of accounts and focused more on the luxury space. And at one point mm-hmm. I had the opportunity to get involved with this account and collaborate and put things together with it. And that account slowly but surely over, it was very, very quickly over time became a very well-known platform, um, which mm-hmm. was previously known, known as the rich kids of Instagram. So there mm-hmm. was a channel Four documentary. It's been featured in global media outlets. It's kind of its own niche now. Mm. Um, and it, it, in my personal opinion, it, it pretty much set the niche for influencing and being in a certain light on social media and making a career out of it. So it was very exciting at the time. And that was that was my career for the last few years. Wow. Um, network, networking and able to talk to some of these wealthy people, meet some very well-known uh, celebrities, work with brands. And yeah, all from uh, the, the comfort of my phone, which was um, a very interesting business at the time. It's almost crazy to think that now, you can start a company from your phone. All you need is a Wi-Fi connection or even 3G if you've got good signal. Um, but back in those days, it was kind of still a new thing. People used yeah. to think that you had to, had to have an office. You had to employ X number of people. Um, you had to have like signs outside and everything else. And mm. nowadays, nowadays, some of the most successful businesses in the world started off from a phone. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing how business is changing. You know, in all the time I've known you, James, something's just literally struck me now. You've been at the forefront of things when it's come to your businesses in, in terms of pivoting and changing. You know, people like, for example, your car boots. I know plenty of people who've done car boots and they've remained market traders. They may have opened a shop. Same with the Internet. But actually, you've changed track quite often because you've seen the market move accordingly. Where's that come about from? I constantly look to change things. Like whatever, whatever it may be, I always look to question it. I even even when it comes to a personal level, I always want to challenge someone's personal beliefs and get to the root cause or or work on the root cause to maybe change opinions to make it better. And that that for me just makes sense. I think as human beings, we're we're not built to work. We're not built to work 50, 60 hour weeks for someone else. And yeah, we're not we're not built to do that. We're built to be inherently lazy. And I think uh, the the mindset is is that way. So if we can do things from A to B in the quickest, most efficient way, um, then why not? And for me, growing up, technology happened. It was happening before before I did it, but I needed to be on it. I think I think even now, I I, I sometimes worry: are, are we not on it? I mean, I'm not. I haven't got anything in blockchain. I haven't got anything in mm. crypto. And I'm kind of thinking, like, oh, am, am I a bit slow? Um, mm. But I think you're right, Rakesh. I think I've been very bold sometimes in mm. changing from one to the other. People are like, oh, why, why are you doing that? Um, touch wood. It's, um, <laughs> it's working. And I would encourage more entrepreneurs to, to think outside the box a little bit and change it yeah. up because the world will change without, with or without you. And you, if you want to continue and you want to be successful, success will evolve and you need to be on that wave or else you'll be left behind. Growing up, I, it was all about... Uh, hard work will get you success but actually as I've developed and as I've no it's my smart journey work. smart work exactly <laughs> yeah. it's no longer hard work it's smart work and I, and I, I definitely see you doing that so which I think um, I think it's I think it's difficult because you, you know I, I think most humans are quite smart people mm. but no, I think most people are quite intelligent people and I think the ability to work hard is smart mm. 
Yes. So if you if you have a difficult challenge that's going to take you five hours to do, most people wouldn't do it. But the person that sits there and goes, yes, I'm going to commit to this. I'm going to give, my, give it my all. They get the job done. And yeah, mm. it took hours and hours of hard work. I consider that quite smart mm. because they because they know that the outcome is worth it. it. It's a combination of, I think you're right. I think years ago, you just told, oh, work really long hours, work really hard. Mm. Do this. Um, but that isn't always the case. If you're doing that hard work for something that's got a really intellectual, uh, smart outcome behind it, mm-hmm. that's more likely to be successful. No, exactly. I agree with that. And, and that's that brings us to now. That brings us to your venture in terms of the legacy circle. Before we you explain in detail around about the legacy circle, what I want to get from you is the three things that you have taken from all of your work in the entrepreneurial world of uh, the rich kids, the market trading, the eBay work. What have you taken that you are now applying to the legacy circle? The first one is uh, it's around the subject. Um, so the first one is network. Now, a lot of people, they say this phrase, your network is your net worth. And you can see that. And it is true. It's not what you know, it's who you know. And if you're able to pick up the phone, send an email, ask someone for advice that can help you get closer to where you need to be. That's so invaluable. That is incredibly valuable to have. I would challenge that and say something that makes people really successful and what I'm personally doing is not the ability to know lots of people, but it's the ability to actually use that network. Okay. You're only good as the ability to use your network, not the fact that you know people. There's lots of people out there that have 5,000 followers uh, or whatever on Instagram or 10,000 LinkedIn connections. And they basically tell you that when they meet you. But if I said to them, can you use that? If I give you something, can you actually utilize that? Do people trust you in your network? I think people look at numbers now a bit more of a, a glamour, almost like being vain. And yeah, in terms of having that big figure next to your name. But it's the ability to use that. Mm-hmm. I would rather have a small network, which is built on trust, transparency, and the ability to deliver what I needed to for even myself or a customer mm-hmm. than just know lots and lots of people. So the okay. f- first thing I'd say is network. So okay. that's something I've learned. Um, and it helped me everything. I mean, with eBay... I had, at one point, I had lots and lots of suppliers. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I actually relied on one supplier who is an amazing human being, which is actually crazy Mm -hmm. because I've known him for nearly 18 years now and I've never physically met the guy, which is so (laughs) weird. But yeah, he's based over in Shenzhen in China. And I trust him and I rely with him completely. Mm -hmm. Like that, and So that's why I mean, it's it's not about the quantity of your network, it's the quality quality and the ability to actually Mm -hmm. use that. So that's my first thing. Second, I don't really know how to say this. I can describe what I want to say. You need to have blinkers, whatever that means. You need to have complete, fo- that's the word. You need to be completely focused. That's laser, la- laser, laser focused. Um, I would say you need blinkers on because in this generation, we're exposed to so much information more than ever. We have an amazing phone that we, we can talk to people around the world. We have TV, we have like, so, we're so connected. It's so easy to get distracted like mm-hmm. something else will be influenced subconsciously or consciously by other people. Um, and I think I've been guilty of this, not recently, but over the last probably five years of my life where I've spoke quite openly about my business. I spoke quite openly about ideas that I've had and they've been criticized and I didn't follow through with them. And for all I know, they might have been a billion pound ideas i don't know so i'd I'd say the more focused you are and that's not to say like ignore everyone in the world Mm. but until you actually do something for yourself and follow things through you won't know if it's a success or not people's opinion will always be there Mm. someone will always be able to offer an opinion the ability for you to have a go at an idea or or Mm. or do smart work might not always be there so yeah being being focused and and i get and i guess for for you being at the forefront and being a real entrepreneur it's not about following in other people's footsteps so it's not as if you can always be getting great advice because actually you're paving your own way so and and this is the thing as as well as these people that look at other entrepreneurs and they aspire to copy their model or they pay for all this all these seminars and things like that you're paving your way even if you fail you're paving that fa- you're paving that failure way it, it it doesn't really matter what matters is are you focused enough with your own idea with your own beliefs that if something you believe is really going to work if you do the smart work and the hard work to get then that's really what's so we've talked about network we've talked about being laser focused 
What's your third one? So my third and something that I think has changed for me recently, when I actually look back at my, my previous uh, success, I didn't really consider this. And I think it, I think it comes down to expectations. Okay. And I know every every person's different. They have different expectations of themselves, of other people, of ideas. So when I say it's really important in terms of how you get more successful is to look at your expectations. I feel that the biggest inhibitor of success is expectation. Mm-hmm. Because what I consider success might not be what you consider success. What I consider a good idea other people might not consider a good idea. What I consider a good person, someone else might think is a bad person. So everyone is different. And I think what it comes down to is if you play on that expectation, it could actually inhibit the fact that you might already be successful, that you might already be happy, that actually what you think is success isn't success. And that and that for me is my big thing. So when, when I say expectation, I think entrepreneurs, people that want to be successful is they need to look at what actually is success to them. Are they going to get success from their expectations? Are their expectations so wild? Like I see this thing where it's like, oh, think big. Yeah. And you're and you're right. Thinking big makes you motivated and brings you mm-hmm. up. But thinking big could also be the biggest problem you ever do. Because if you think so big and you never aspire to get even 1% of that thinking big, you're technically, according to your mind, a failure. Whereas if you think small, and you think, I need to do this this hour, and you do that, whatever it may be, is it a phone call, is it an email, is it, I don't know, pick up something, like whatever it is, you're successful in that hour. Yeah. And I think if you do those little minute things, you learn what you, to expect. And then when you do set something that's big, you know the little steps you need to do to expect that success. So yes, expectation for me. I think I just mentioned it recently that size doesn't matter when it comes to your dreams, but action does. So it is about taking actionable steps to achieve what it is that you want to achieve. And that's what's going to give you the success that you want and you deserve. So what is success for you, James? Um, Success for me is to be comfortable in what I do. Okay. Okay, so... That, that's uh, quite a, a bland statement. It, it's not a, a monetized situation. I mm. think everyone's comfortable at a different point. For me, being comfortable, it means I'm working on my dreams. Mm-hmm. I am working with good people, what I deem good people. And we have our small successes, be that a meeting that goes well, be that a client that's happy, be that a really cool video that we produce for marketing, mm-hmm. be it whatever it may be. That for me is being successful, is being comfortable with the environment that I'm in. And I think the more people think about it and I think, hmm, am I comfortable in my situation? Am I comfortable in my mm. environment? I don't think there's that many people that really are, which I think is quite sad. So I would say, look at what makes you happy. Mm. Look at what you think is success to keep making you happy and work on that. Don't work on anything else. So, <laughs> so that's bringing us right up to the legacy circle. How do you know you'll have su- succeeded with the legacy circle? Okay, so this one's really simple. I wanted to do something different. So if I do something different with my business life, I would say I'm successful. I've never done this before. We're doing it. We're making it happen. I'm successful. The second part would be actually physically finding the right partners, finding the right team. Although we've, as you know, we've had a bit of drama at the mm-hmm. start and a lot of time was invested in probably the wrong people i now think we've got that we've got that team that for me is success mm-hmm. and then the last part is although my business or, or our business is based on um, face-to-face interaction and we're, we're mm-hmm. trying to do a, a make a company during a, a global pandemic we're doing everything within our power to make sure that when we have the opportunity we are successful mm-hmm. and for me that means we already are successful because we're not falling out We are not free from the ideas that we had. And we're also not letting things that are out of our control actually affect what's in our control. Um, So, yeah, that for me means that we're successful. So I already think we are successful. And I think everything else now is a bonus. And I'm really excited to see what we do in the future. Okay, and in terms of this pressure cauldron world that we're living in right now, and with all the, even though you're enjoying your success, some of it, you do get pressure. So how do you deal with all of that? Uh, the same way that a lot of people do i worry i have anxiety i get upset i get irrational thoughts in my mind mm-hmm. um how i deal with it I, I i'm very lucky because i feel that i'm getting better at how to cope with that but i've only started to do that mm. not just because not because of your work but i've found my my venting system 
if that makes sense. Uh, so, so for me, it's my gym. I need to go work out. I need to do something that isn't on my phone, that isn't on my laptop, where people aren't talking to me, uh, where I'm not thinking about work, where I'm not thinking yeah. about the what ifs, because the what ifs for me is the pressure cauldron that you, you, mm. you spoke about. People are so agitated and are thinking irrationally because it's the what ifs that are causing them the damage. So I, I have to have a venting system. Um, in terms of how I'm dealing with things at the moment, things coming through that are not so pleasant, it's more, okay, great, we've got this to deal with. How do we deal with it? How do we solve it? Or is it a case of, okay, that's happened, but that's irrelevant? And that's the big thing. It's like, there's a lot of things that have happened to me probably over the last six months or even this year, where last year would probably bother me. And I spend a lot of time thinking about it or, or trying to trying to work it out. Whereas now I'm just kind of like, that's irrelevant. I've already had that experience. Yeah, so much more passive. And I think that only unfortunately comes down to experience. And you have to you have to lift those days of your life where you've had those issues and realize that the next day it didn't make any difference to your life. You you're still here. <laughs> and I think what what I've also realized from you is that it is about accepting that we will have a whole gambit of emotions. And that it's the worst thing you can do is suppress anything. So it's let it happen and and, and deal with it the way you deal with it. The only the only way you, way you know you're happy is because you've been sad before. Mm, that's not it. many people think that not many people think that way they think they have to be a certain level all the time mm. and, and that's just that's just not how life works unfortunately it's yeah. definitely not how business works and i mean for you read these stories where these multi-millionaires are absolutely smashing it and then within six mm. months they've got nothing I, it, life can life can change <laughs> very quickly <laughs> people I, I say this and i see this a lot people live their life to extremes uh you know they're joyful and ecstatic when they have a win and actually they're anxious depressed when things aren't going their way whereas actually what i say to people is learn to accept that life is a roller coaster and try and find a balance in the middle that yes understand you will have highs you will have lows celebrate everything that you have but have that gratitude and really enjoy your life and not not to like take that to the next level but also i think people need to realize and i i did this there's no one to get off that roller coaster Mm -hmm. if that if that ride isn't meant for you if you're not enjoying that ride if that ride on that roller coaster isn't going to the destination you want or giving you the thrill that you you need really need get off exactly like, <laughs> <laughs> although it's not olden towers you're not stuck on the ride forever i mean exactly you can choose you can choose if you want to get on or not and um i i i really do encourage as many people to to really look at that and think is this really worth it is this going to make me happy is this mm. what i want to spend my life doing my investment in my time that's the only thing you'll never get back i think that's brilliant james and one thing i do want to get from you is what is it that you want to be remembered for hopefully not my bad jokes um <laughs> or, although although they they do seem to disappear at the table sometimes very very good question i i pride myself on being myself which sounds such a vanilla statement again but i i am who i am i don't need to pretend to be something i'm not so some of the biggest compliments i've ever had is james you're authentic you're humble you're so there's no side to you and i i want to carry that forward and i hope that i hope i've got a couple more years left but if people think about me or if people speak speak of me they know that yeah he's not this guy that got lucky with this or that or he's not this person that has this attitude because he does this this and this i just want to be known as james who speaks his mind who is what he is and uh yeah he, he works really hard to help people and yeah genuine and authentic and that's what comes to mind for me genuine authentic but ever even more so great to see and that's what you're aspiring to continue to do because of the world we live in this always on digital fomo fake social media world that everybody's into and yeah. to find the person you are i think is admirable it's a sad world we live in like it, mm. it really is and i don't think people are, are really that aware of it look at look at young people on social media they praise the likes of celebrity culture and everything yeah. else but that isn't real like the, the sooner you realize it's not actually achievable it's mm-hmm. not real it is not exactly what you see on a photo or a video on instagram like people need to just realize that because we're living in a fantasy world and it's kind of nice to let your mind drift Mm. off and aspire to have 
amazing cars or holidays or handbags or whatever it may be but in the grand scheme of things it's all staged i have got i've got a big personal passion of mine about talking out about social media and the dark side of it and it's it's scary it really is scary um and i just hope that a lot of people really do look deeper into what is authentic and what's not wow and uh, try to stay true to themselves yeah definitely a topic for another time the dark side of the social media I mean, we've seen plenty of it. But James, I want to thank you for your time today and especially the three valuable insights in terms of your network, being laser focused and setting expectations or having the right expectations when it comes to what is it that you've taken from your past and taken into your present and future. Thank you very much for your time, James. You're more than welcome. Thanks for having me. I do enjoy chatting with James. He always gives me fresh insights and leaves me feeling quite inspired after our chats. From his three key takeaways for his second success, being blinkered resonated so much with me. Much of my success has been due to being laser focused on what I've needed to achieve. So I want to spend the next few minutes talking about how I ensured I remained laser focused when it came to achieving success. But before I do, I want to mention a book by Cal Newport called Deep Work, Rules for Focused Success in a Distracted World. The following description is taken from his website. One of the most valuable skills in our economy is becoming increasingly rare. If you master this skill, you will achieve extraordinary results. Deep work is the ability to focus without distraction on a cognitively demanding task. It's a skill that allows you to quickly master complicated information and produce better results in less time. Deep work will make you better at what you do and provide the sense of true fulfillment that comes from craftsmanship. In short, deep work is like a superpower in our increasingly competitive 21st century economy and yet most people have lost the ability to go deep spending their days instead in a frantic blur of email and social media not even realizing there's a better way in the book he describes four rules to develop deep work or blinkers or this laser focus i guess when i look back it's something that i've always done so number one quit social media i guess that's a little extreme however use it if it enables your success like it did and does for james Back when I was writing up my PhD thesis, before the time of social media, my only distraction was the radio and football manager on the PC. And as much as I tried to emulate Sir Alex Ferguson by taking Man United to the title and cup wins, it wasn't going to deliver my thesis. So by uninstalling the game, I solely focused on writing. Without distraction, it's amazing how quickly you get into a flow. These days, I set my phone to silent to avoid any kind of distraction. Number two, embrace the boredom. As Cal Newport says, Our brains are addicted to on-demand distraction, so we need to learn to shake the addiction. And we can do this, amongst other ways, by scheduling our tasks with hard stops. I guess knowing that I need to release a weekly podcast, and the fact that it's public knowledge, ensures that I have a deadline to stick to, which forces and motivates me to deliver. Number three, drain the swallows. This is about making your time precious and ensuring it's not wasted in menial tasks that don't add value. I'm reading Benjamin Hardy's latest book, Who Not How, and in it he says you need to focus on who can do things for you rather than you having to worry about how to do them yourself. This is a lesson I guess I learned when I started marketing my life coaching business. Trying to do it all by myself, I never had enough time in the day. However, by engaging with people to help manage my design work, my PR, etc., it freed up my time to focus on value-added work. And finally, number four, deep work. This is about making a habit of the valuable work you need to do, ensuring you prepare, making the time available and measuring what you do. I guess I need to thank my mum for this, ensuring I always completed my homework on time, had the necessary space in which to do it and the right tools. Do you find it challenging to engage in deep work? And do you find that it's a lack of deep work that's holding you back from success? If you've answered yes to either or both, reach out and I'd be happy to see how I could help. This was episode two of the Second Success Podcast. Once again, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I did putting it together. And once again, a huge thank you to my good friend James for joining me. So with us having entered into another national lockdown here in the UK, now might be the right time to start some deep work on what you need or might want to do. And as we've entered into this lockdown, there are plenty that might be feeling like they don't know what to do. Sometimes it's not just about sitting back and accepting things as they are. Yes, there are government guidelines to follow, but you need to keep that fire burning. You need to get mad. I'll leave you with this little piece of inspiration from a movie from 1975, which is so apt right now. I don't have to tell you things are bad. 
Everybody knows things are bad. It's a depression. Everybody's out of work or scared of losing their job. The dollar buys a nickel's worth. Banks are going bust. Shopkeepers keep a gun under the counter. Punks are running wild in the street and there's nobody anywhere who seems to know what to do and there's no end to it. We know the air is unfit to breathe and our food is unfit to eat. We sit watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad, worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy, so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house, and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller, and all we say is, please, at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel-belted radios, and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to write. I don't want you to write to your congressman because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value. I'm Dr. Rakesh Rana, The Clear Coach. Thank you for listening.